thing in the language C. In this first video, we're going to basically learn a Hello World program. In most programming languages, one of the first things you want to do is build a program that simply says hello. And the reason for that is you get to learn a little bit about the integrated development environment in which you're working, and you get to go through the build cycle one time and literally have a program just say, hello world. So it's the first thing you're gonna do in a language, and in all of our language playlists, that's what we're gonna do first. So welcome to Hello World. All right, let's take a look at the CS50 IDE, and we're gonna be experimenting with the layout a little bit because some of my test video recordings have been cutting off some of the Linux terminal. So I'm actually experimenting with how these videos will present themselves the best, but I still want to show you the original layout of the IDE and how I typically use it. So we're going to play with this and make sure that everything is being recorded in a way that you can see it. And whatever works the best, we'll work it out in this video and keep going. So in the IDE, this dark area up here, and by the way, I'm using the night layout because it's just a lot easier for me to see. I, I like it better in all of my IDEs. You may want the, the whiter version that comes up as a default. If you look in the menus, you'll see how to change it. It's pretty easy. But this upper area is where my documents, where my source code files are such that I can edit them. This blue area is called a terminal area, and it is a full Linux terminal which means I have supervisory rights to Linux and I can destroy all of my work if I'm not careful in how I delete. So if you are familiar with Linux, be very, be, care be very careful and I wouldn't recommend using a recursive delete command because you could wipe out everything if you're in root. Okay, up here we're gonna see that we have a folder structure. Yours will just be root when you start out. I have archives of some of my old code and I've created this folder called school where I'm going to put the, the C files that we build as we go. Okay. And one of the things I'm going to show you is how to navigate a little bit. So I'm going to make sure that this is a white cursor so that I know my focus is in this window. And I'm just going to say LS. That means list what's in my folder. And I see archives in school, which makes sense. So I'm going to say change directory to school. Now I'm in the school directory and if I ls there's nothing there. Okay. Now if I try to cd dot dot, very common mistake because dot dot means go up the tree. So if I want to go back to root and I do that it's not going to work because it's actually cd space dot dot. Now it takes me back to root. Okay there's my two directories. But to make a very bad dad joke, we're going to stay in school for what we're doing. So we're back in school. <laughs> okay. Now, in school, I'm going to use this to say, give me a new file, which is at the bottom. And I'm going to name it hello.c. I recommend that you keep your names very simple and all lowercase, especially until you get used to it. Notice there's a little blue C over the page icon so that I know that this is a C source code file. And if I double click it, it's going to open it up here and obviously it's blank. Now what I'm going to do, because with my recording software, if I get below about where the cursor is now, for some reason it doesn't pick it up. There's a whole area of blue that is not being recorded for me. So I'm going to do something different that also is useful. And I've seen students like to do this. You can bring this up and either do a half screen split or you can make it two tabs at the top. And either way is fine. And I can bring this kind of down here to where I know you're gonna see it as I do my recording. And I'm gonna show you that the clear function works to get rid of all of the stuff I was doing when I was testing. And so my terminal is just another tab up here. Now it really doesn't matter how you do it, but I think for purposes of these demos, this is gonna be a little bit cleaner 
so that you can really see the runs and I'll just go back and forth between the tabs. Okay, so it's just another example of being closer to like a, a browser window, if you will. So let's start in on a Hello World program. And to do it, I'm going to show you the full documentation that I expect in my classes. So you're going to learn multi-line and single line commenting at the same time. So multi-line commenting, we're going to start with slash star, and I'm going to put my name on my work, and the date, let's see, today is 13 July 2020, and I would put my class name in here, maybe the period number, if I'm in third period, and then the assignment number. Since we run most of my assignments by PSET, it might work problem set, it might be PSET 3 TAC 2, which would be the second assignment of PSET 3. Um, so you'll know based on what your teacher or myself tells you to do for that. Then I close it with an asterisk slash. Okay, so that is the beginning and the closing of a multi-line comment. So basically the compiler is going to ignore all of that. It's a way of, of leaving notes in your code. Next, I'm going to do a single line comment, which starts with slash slash. So anything after a slash slash is going to be ignored by the, co the compiler. These are going to be my preprocessor direct, di can't spell today, directives. Okay. And those are going to be libraries that we need to include in order for our code to run correctly. And the one you're always going to use is standard I.O. dot H. And by the way, don't spell that studio. It's really easy to want to put a U in there. And I've had a lot of students lose a lot of time and sleep uh, with a, an error that I make all the time myself when I'm not paying attention or if I'm tired. Then we're going to include CS50 dot H because as we go along, they've got some really cool um, input output things that we're going to play with um, that you're going to want. So include that. And then I always just kind of as a rule include string dot h. And these are header files. And header files are used by the compiler to add functionality because C on its own is a very, very small language. And so other routines that we need are are uh, prototyped in a header file, and then there's an actual um, source file for those libraries that it will go get. But it goes to the header files to get the signatures of the methods that we're going to need um, so that it knows that we're doing things correctly. All right. Every program in C needs a main method. When they wrote C in Bell Labs because they were writing Unix, they said, well, we need some place to start. Let's just call it main. Now, the main method is actually a function. It's going to return an integer to the operating system. Any program that exits properly returns a zero to the operating system. That's just because that's the default that they came up with years ago. And it really doesn't matter the operating system. If you return zero, it means your program ended correctly. All right? So int, we're going to call it main, and for now, we're just going to put void, meaning we're not worried about any input parameters to this program. Then we need an open, and if I hit return, it's automatically going to give me my close brace. All right, give ourselves a little room, and we're going to put our first command in, which is a formatted print statement. So in C, it's called print f for formatted, and we open parentheses because we have to feed as a parameter to that method. The method is called printf, so we're going to feed it what we want it to say, which is going to be hello world. Okay, and since that's the end, we're going to put a semicolon, and I'm going to tab over a couple and just put a comment that says just saying hi. All right? And that is a Hello World program. Now, that's pretty easy to read. It, some of it may look 
complicated to you at first. But, oh, and let me control save. And if you look up here, it says all changes are saved. Okay. So I hold the control key down and hit S. Or I can go file and hit save. Okay. I could also make a different copy of it by using save as and changing the name. Okay. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to say ls and sure enough there's hello.c. Now I want to turn this into a program that will run which means I need to compile it. Now the C compiler is called Clang and Clang spelled C-L-A-N-G is just C language. Okay, So they didn't spend a lot of time thinking of a name but Clang needs a lot of uh, input parameters that we're not going to make you worry about. So we run a program called make and all I do is type hello. I don't even need the C, the dot C. I just say make hello and you're going to see this stuff go by. Now if I had errors in my code you'd see them all show up and we'll show you some of that as we go. But you'll notice it called Clang and it had a bunch of these parameter sets and notice it said hello.c. So it automatically added the .c for me, okay? And it made an object file called hello. Now let's make sure it did. I'm gonna type ls, and you'll notice I see this green file with an asterisk after it. This in Linux means I am executable. So let's just say hello, see if it works. No, it doesn't. Because in C, one of the quirks is I need to say from where I am, which means dot slash, hello. I have to give it the path to where it is. And there it is. It says hello world. Now, that's kind of annoying. Look at that. My cursor is slapped onto the end of my print string. Well, that's annoying. So let's see if we can go fix that. One of the things we can do here is put a forward slash n, and that's known as an escape sequence, and that should give us a new line. A slash t gives us a tab, okay? So you could look up all the escape characters. A slash double quote puts a double quote in. In fact, we'll play with that. But So I put it in there. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to run hello again. Well, that didn't do anything. Why? Well, first of all, over here, I have to save my work. Okay, so I saved my work. Let's try it. Does it work? Nope, it sure didn't. Why not? Because I didn't recompile the new source code with my change into a new executable. Okay? So when I make changes, even if it's a single character change to fix a syntax error, I need to save it. So I'm gonna control save again. It says all changes saved. Then I need to go back here and I need to do make hello again. Now, and notice if I use the up arrow, it scrolls through all of the commands I've already typed. Down arrow will go backwards, okay? So make dot slash hello now, and you'll notice now I get it on a new line, okay? So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna clear this so I stay near the top. And now let's practice with another escape sequence code. I'm gonna put world in quotes. And see, if I just did this, you'll notice that it thinks this is something else now. It's, it's not, it thinks that this string ends, okay? So in fact, let's try to control save. Let's make that and look at the errors we generate. Wow, look at that, okay? It's expecting a semi, uh, a parentheses. It tries to tell me what's going wrong, missing terminating character. It's all over the map, right? It does not like that, okay? So let's, let's clear this, and I'll go back over here. And we kind of know what we did to ourselves. 
But if I put an escape in front of it, now it turns it blue and everything else is correct again. What it's saying is ignore this quote or treat this as a quote that's part of the string, not part of the syntax of the command. And I want the whole word in quotes, so I'm going to do it twice. Okay? Now that looks confusing in here, so you got to think about it. Okay? But I'm going to control save. All my changes are saved. I'm going to come back here, up arrow, up arrow, make hello, dot slash hello, and notice world is now in double quotes. So it, it knew that that slash double quote was supposed to just be a quotation mark in my output string. Okay? And just to go a step further, this can also be single quotes. Control save. All my changes are saved. Back here. Do a make. Oops, too far. Hello world, now it's in single quotes, okay? So escape codes are very, very useful. If I came in here and said, let's push this over, tab, 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 okay? That should be a lot. It's gonna move it over on the screen. So I've saved my changes. Make. And notice it's three tabs over, okay? So that basically is a Hello World program, all right? And we're gonna go a lot further than this, but that's a really good introduction. So I would like to see you practice this on your own. And when you can get this down fairly easily, move to the next one, and we'll just keep walking in to the language C. So in that video sequence, you've learned a basic Hello World program. Coming up next, we're gonna talk about basic assignments and sequencing. So we'll see you on the other side.